Hi, welcome to My Court Coach. I'm Jalen, and I'll be your instructor as we navigate through form DV400 info. So the form is an instructional uh, form, hence why they have the words information, INFO. And this form is about how do I ask a change or end a domestic violence restraining order after hearing. So domestic violence restraining order after hearing means that you have gone through the temporary restraining order phase. You have also gone through the hearing on a domestic violence restraining order. And your, your restraining order is now anywhere from you know six months to five years. So you've prevailed, you've won at your restraining order hearing, and now you want to change it. So who can, the, who can ask the court to change or end the restraining order after hearing? The protected party or the restraining party can ask to modify or terminate the restraining orders issued in the restraining order after hearing before the orders expire. Do not use FL 300, which is the request for order form, to ask to renew the restraining orders in form DV 130 before they expire. Use request to renew restraining order DV 700. So they are also going to give you instructions if you had wanted to renew your restraining order so that it lasts longer. So that's how you're changing it so that it lasts longer than the amount of time that the court granted it for you. So what orders can be changed or ended? A party may ask the court to change or end any of the orders made on the DV-130, including the restraining orders of the protected persons from violence or threat of violence by others. For example, the no contact, the stay away, the move out, recording unlawful communication orders, the list of persons protected by the orders, the child custody and visitation orders, and spousal or domestic partner support orders. If I, ask the end, if I ask to end the restraining order, can I keep my child custody and visitation support orders in place? If the restraining order ends, then the child custody and visitation orders will remain in effect unless the court also changes or ends those orders. What if the restrained party wants to change or end the restraining orders? A restrained party must, must not violate the restraining order to contact the protected party. These are very strict requirements if the restrained party asks the court to change or end the orders as described in this form. What forms do I fill out to ask or change, to change or end the restraining order after hearing? To ask for an order to change or end your restraining order, you have to fill out the request for order form, the FL 300. To ask to change the child custody and visitation, you may also need some of these forms. The FL 105, which is the Declaration Under Uniform Child Custody and Jurisdiction Enforcement Act, the Child Custody and Visitation Application Attachment, the Request for Child Abduction Prevention Orders, the Children's Holiday Schedule, Physical Custody Attachment, and a Joint Legal Custody Attachment. These are not required, but they are um, available for your use in case you do want to modify any custody and visitation orders that are currently in place under the restraining order. And you would, in fact, attach those to the FL 300, the request for order form. You can't complete them on uh, its own. They are attachments. So to ask the court to change the child support orders made in DV 130, you need a current income and expense declaration. You may use the simplified financial statement instead if you meet the requirements listed on the FL 155. So anytime you want to modify or request anything related to money, you always need an income and expense declaration, always. So to ask the court to change the spouse support orders, or any orders about your finances, you will also need this income and expense declaration. To ask the court to make any orders for attorney's fees and costs, you will still need the income and expense declaration, but you will also need to attach to the FL 300 the request for attorney's fees and costs, and you also will need to attach the supporting declaration for attorney fees and costs. And if you are if the person that you're asking the attorney's fees to make that contribution, if they are your spouse, 
then you will also have an additional attachment that will be um, identified on the FL158. And that form is the FL157. And it's essentially the factors that the court would require you to go through in order to establish why your spouse should contribute to your attorney's fees and costs. So if you plan on having witnesses testify at the hearing, then you will need FL321, the witness list, and then any other additional forms you may need as described on page three and four of this information sheet. So this is a very comprehensive list of what it is that you need if you in fact are trying to change any parts of your restraining order. And if you're trying to renew though, you wouldn't use the FL 300. That is the point of this first page. They're trying to have you differentiate between the two and differentiate between not only the two forms, but your two requests. So what if I want to respond to a request to change or end the restraining order. You would have to complete the FL 320, which is the responsive declaration to the request for order. And there's an information sheet related to that as well. So to complete the FL 300, the caption, you type in your, your name, your address, your confidential address if you have one, and the court's address. You write the names of the parties in the caption. If you already have a family law case, use the party names in that case as written. If you're the petitioner, you use you will be the petitioner on the FL 300. If you're the respondent, you will be the respondent in the FL 300. If you don't have a family law case, list yourself as a petitioner on form FL 300. If you are the protected party on the restraining order, and list yourself as a respondent on form FL 300 if you are the restrained party on the restraining order. Check all the boxes that apply to the orders you want. So there's custody, support, property, visitation, domestic violence restraining order, spouse support, and attorney's fees. So check the change box if you want to change the order. So this box right here. Below that, indicate the orders that you want to change. If you want to ask the court to end the domestic violence restraining order, then you have to check the box domestic violence restraining order. Then check other and write end restraining order in form DB130. So you're going to check this box and end orders in form DB130. You're going to write the name of the other parties in your case. You're going to leave this blank. The court will fill in the date, time, and location of the hearing. For item three, this is a notice to the other parties in this case that essentially they have a right to file the FL 320, the responsive declaration within a certain time frame. And then number uh, four through five is leave these blanks because the court will complete them if it grants the order. And then item six is in some counties, the court will check the item six and provide the details of your child custody and mediation or recommended counseling. Other courts of the party, other courts require that the parties or the party's attorney to make the appointment and then complete six before filing FL 300. Ask the family law facilitators or a self-help center to find out what your court requires. And then seven through eight, leave this blank. The court will complete them if needed. And then you're gonna complete form FL 300, pages two and four. You're gonna complete the additional forms. So if you were requesting child custody and visitation orders, you would add those attachments, for example. And then you're gonna file your completed forms. So you're gonna take them to the clerk's office, mail them or e-file them if it's available in your county. The court clerk will keep the original, give you back the copies you made with a court date and time stamp on the first page of the request for order. So that will be found right here. To help schedule the hearing date, tell the court if the protected party is registered in the Safe at Home program. Extra time is needed for the protected party to receive notice after it's served on the Secretary of State. The filing fee. Generally, there's no filing fee to request to change or end the orders. However, after a restraining order has ended, the court may charge a filing fee if the party files to request a change of custody, visitation, or support orders that were granted in the domestic violence restraining order. Number 12, temporary emergency ex parte orders, non-domestic violence restraining orders. So non-domestic is when you don't have a relationship, 
um, like they're not your significant other or they're not your parent or there's no family relationship there, then it's a non-domestic violence restraining order. So it could be a civil harassment restraining order, for example. So to address emergencies, courts can sometimes grant a party's request for a temporary emergency order with or without the other party before the court hearing. The temporary orders last until the day of the hearing. A request for temporary emergency orders must involve an immediate danger or irreparable harm to a party or children in the case or an immediate loss or damage to property. You can ask your court's family law facilitators or self-help center to explain the procedures for requesting temporary emergency orders at your court and follow those procedures. By law, the court cannot grant a restrained party's request for a temporary emergency order to change or end the restraining orders before the noticed court hearing. However, the restrained party may seek a court order for a shorter time until the hearing or for a shorter time to serve the request on the protected party. And I'm just going to go back and show you what that is referring to. And it's this, this box right here, temporary emergency order. So serve the request for order documents. The other party must be served with a copy of the request for order form and its attachments, a copy of any temporary emergency orders that were granted, a blank form of the FL320, and a blank form of the income and expense declaration if you're asking for uh, support modifications. General information about service. So service is the act of giving your legal papers to all persons named as parties in the case so that they know what orders you're asking for, whether temporary orders were made before the hearing, day and time and location of the hearing, and how to respond to your request. So service is essentially delivery delivery of the documents, whether it's personally, by mail, or some alternative service that the court has approved. If you have any questions about serving these forms, you can talk to your lawyer or contact your family law facilitator's office or any self-help centers. Deadlines. So unless the court orders a different deadline, personal service or hand delivery must be completed at least to 16 court days before the hearing. Service by mail must be completed at least 16 court days plus five calendar days before the hearing if the service is done within that state. So 16 court days are essentially 16 business days. You should go to your local uh, court's website and find out what the court holidays are, what days they are closed, and then you would need to include that in your court days. So in the weekends, they're closed, so those days would not be counted in the court days. But calendar days, they would be counted. So you would need to, if you're doing it by mail, 16 court days plus the five calendar days. And this is just to give the other party ample time to respond to your request under your, the request for order. So who can serve the documents? The server must be 18 years of age or older and not be anyone protected on the restraining order. You can't, you, you cannot serve the papers. The server can be a friend, a relative who's not involved in your case, a sheriff, a professional process server. If you're serving it by mail, the server must live or work in the county where the mailing took place. When is personal service required? A restrained party's request to change your under restraining order must always be hand delivered on the protected party unless the court allows another method. The court granted temporary emergency orders that start before the hearing date. So note, special procedures apply for personal service on a protected party who has a confidential address with the Secretary of State a Safe at Home program. For more information, you can go to the Secretary of State website. So those are the two requirements for personal service which is when the restrained party is requesting to make that change, and then if the court granted temporary emergency orders. So when, my, when is service by mail permitted? A protected party's request to change or end the restraining order may be served on the restrained party by mail. Requests by the either party only to change a temporary order for child custody and visitation or orders are, and they're not protective orders, must may be served by mail. So just to clarify uh, really quick, if it's to change any orders that are related to custody and visitation, 
and there are temporary orders on there, then you can in fact serve that by mail. Requests made by either party only to change a permanent or final order for child custody and visitation or child support may also be served by mail. And um, if, if address verification uh, can also be included on another form. Um, and essentially that is only really requiring that since this is a permanent or final order, the court needs to make sure that the other party's address is in fact sufficient after a final order is made. So it might be an address that's last listed on the court file or the exchanges that you made with the other party and you know that they live there or you know that's their mailing address because you have some personal knowledge um, behind it. So the server must complete the proof of service. So after the forms are personally served, the server must complete the proof of personal service and give it to you. There's the proof of personal service that will be used for this purpose. And then there's also an information sheet for more instructions. If it's served by mail, then you can use the FL-335. And there's also an instructional sheet that would help you fill it out too. You have to file the proof of service before your hearing. Make three copies of the proof of service. Give the original and copies to the clerk, clerk as soon as you uh, file them and or before your hearing. The court clerk will keep the original and give you back the copy stamped file. Bring a copy stamped file to your hearing. And the file proof of service shows the judge that the person received a copy of the request for order and all the other documents or attachments. Then you need to get ready for your hearing. You can learn more about that on the court's website. Then you need to go to the court hearing. Take at least three copies of your filed forms to the hearing and include the proof of service. At the hearing, the judge will decide whether to change or end the restraining order. The reason why you'd want to take at least three copies is because sometimes when you think you filed something, you do have the filed copy in, in your hand. It doesn't somehow make it to the judge's hand. And so you would need to provide that to the court that, yes, I did in fact file this, or yes, I did actually serve this, and here's my proof because the court clerk had stamped my paperwork. So it's just for safety measures. So what if the judge changes or ends the restraining order at, at the hearing? So the judge changes or, so the judge changes the orders, then they're going to fill out a form called DV-130, which is a restraining order after hearing, and that shows the changed orders, and they're gonna check the box amended. On the top of the form, the court will write the number of the amendment on the form, so it could be uh, it's the first time, then it's going to write you know, first before the word amended, and then they're going to give the court three copies. You're going to give the court three copies of that so that the court can write those amended orders on the proposed amended order. Nice little tip is be uh, prepared to have the restraining order after hearing and just write it for the court and whatever it is that you're requesting, you know, hopefully the court does grant it to you and all uh, your judge has to do is sign off on the first amended restraining order after hearing. So if the judge ends the restraining order, give the court the findings in order after, uh, findings in order to terminate the restraining order after hearing, and you're only gonna complete items one and two and give the court three copies. After the judge signs the order, the clerk, court clerk will file the original and give you three stamped copies. Then you're going to serve the court order. So have the other per, have the other party personally served with a copy of the filed orders made on DV 130 or DV 400, unless the court orders another method of service or other party was served at the hearing. So if they're there at the hearing, you don't need to serve anybody unless the court orders you to. If they're not, then the court's going to instruct you as to how to serve it, serve them. So you're going to file the proof of service. So the server must complete a proof of personal service. So the same process that you did, you know, here, you would do it again. The original proof of personal service must then be filed with the court clerk. The clerk will file the original and give back the copies you sent to the clerk stamp filed. Keep one copy with you and another in a safe place in case you need to show it to the police. And then get the order entered into the statewide restraining order registry. So the court will send the filed amended form and proof of service to the law enforcement for you. 
The way police, that way police across the state and nation will know that the order has changed or been amended. And that just essentially goes into the uh, CLETS form or CLETS system. And so that's how it gets updated in, throughout the nation. And then if you need more help, you can ask the court clerk about free or low cost legal help for a referral to a domestic violence or legal assistance program. You can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. It is free and private and they can help you in more than 100 languages. And then number 28. If you ever need protection in the future, you can always go back to court and ask for a restraining order. We hope that you found this helpful and best of luck.